Today I just want to talk about tile and window management and why I think it is a fundamentally better way to maintain your windows, especially if you use the sort of programs that I use on my system, so that is a lot of keyboard driven applications. Now I'm not going to be talking about tile and window managers as a separate thing from a desktop environment. I've done a separate video where I talk about desktop environments and window managers and I'll put that up on that corner if I remember to do so, but that's not what today's video is. What today's video is, is talking about tiling window management as a way to maintain your windows. So regardless of whether that's built into a desktop environment or whether that's a separate entity, this is gonna be about the general idea of tiling window management. Now, for the examples I do in this video, it's gonna be done with BSPWM because that's what I use on my system. But I'm gonna to try to make what I say about the examples be more general ideas rather than be BSPWM specific. Anything that is BSPWM specific, I'll mention that as a bit of a caveat. I might also do a separate video as well about why BSPWM is so great, but that isn't what today's video is going to be about. So let's not waste any more time and just get right into it. So when you just have one window on your screen, a floating window manager and a tiling window manager and even some other sorts of window managers as well, they all sort of behave in basically the same sort of way. The point where they start to differ is when you have multiple windows on your screen and this is where floating window managers tend to get really annoying to use. With a tiling window manager though, when you just make a separate window, and let's just say we have one window on my screen. Okay, so we have one window on my screen, this is fine, I can see everything in the window, but if this was a floating window manager, when I add a second window, and this window is sized like this, what it's gonna do is place the other window directly on top of this, which means that whatever I'm looking at in this window is gonna be covered. So let's say I open up a file manager, and let's say I actually wanna see what's in here. But if I was on a floating window manager, what would happen when I open this up is it would probably appear somewhere like this and cover the stuff that I'm trying to see. Whereas as you saw, being on a tiling window manager, when I open up this window, all it does is resizes the other windows. So that means that I can actually see everything on my desktop at once. Now this obviously doesn't come without its problem because let's say we keep adding some more windows here and now we're at the point where some of these windows are being cut so small that they're not really that usable. Well, what you can do at this point is resize some of these windows. Let's make this one a bit bigger here. This didn't need to be as big as it was. Let's make this window bigger here. And it's back to the point now where you can pretty much use all of the windows that are on the screen. But obviously there will come a point where even though you can resize the windows, you'll just have too many windows on one desktop to make it so it's actually feasible to do that. So let's just make a bunch of windows here. There's no real way to make the window way down in the bottom corner here actually usable. But what you can do then is like with most other modern window managers, you can then move those windows to a different workspace, a different desktop, depending on what they want to call them on that actual window manager. The same problem does exist with a floating window manager as well. If I was to have this many windows on a single workspace on a floating window manager, it really wouldn't be usable within that system as well. So it's not a problem that's specific to a tiling window manager, it's just a problem that exists with having too many windows on your screen at one time. Another one of the great things about a tiling window manager is automatic layouts and very simple window spawning rules. So unlike a floating window manager where you kind of have to sort of guess where the window is going to spawn, with a tiling window manager, once you understand the rules of your specific window manager, you know exactly where the windows are going to spawn. So for example, if I'm focused on this window right here and then I spawn a new window, what it's gonna do is cut this window in half vertically and then spawn the new window over here. And if I'm focused on this one here and I spawn a new window, what it's gonna do is cut this one horizontally and spawn the new window down here. And this one is gonna cut it vertically and then spawn the window to the right. This one over here, it'll cut it horizontally and then spawn it under it. This one here, cut it vertically, spawn it to the right. So once you get used to your tiling window manager, you know exactly where the windows are going to spawn at all times. Whereas with a floating window manager, as I was saying, you don't really know half the time where the window is going to spawn. Some window managers will spawn them where your mouse is currently located, but if you're using something like Windows, on Windows it'll spawn wherever the program was last located, which can be a problem, especially if you were to do something like, let's just make this window here floating, and then put it, I don't know, halfway off the screen. Well, if you were to do this on Windows, what it's gonna do is sometimes spawn the new window halfway off the screen like this, and sometimes it'll be all the way off the screen, which makes it really annoying to actually access that window. But with a tiling window manager, you don't have this problem because you know that it'll always be spawning within the layout that currently exists. Now, depending on how your window manager works, you might be able to define custom layouts. Now, it can be done 
in BSPWM. It's just a little bit more difficult because this window manager is a tree-based window manager as opposed to a layout-based window manager like something such as DWM. In DWM, you could do something like, say, have this half of the screen be, I don't know, evenly sized nodes, and then this side of the screen be something like Fibonacci nodes or something like that. So Fibonacci nodes would be creating nodes in an order like this. I know it's not technically Fibonacci, but it's called Fibonacci for whatever reason. So because you can define your own custom layout, you can work exactly the way that you want to work. Now obviously, on a floating window manager, you can do the same thing. You just have to resize the windows yourself, and it's really annoying to work with. So if you wanted to have a layout that looked something like this, well, you have to resize this window, and resize this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and all of these other ones in here as well which when you're trying to get some real work done is just a massive waste of time. So you should just let your window manager deal with the sizing and then get some real work done. So this next point is a really big one for me. So I'm very frequently using keyboard driven applications, specifically terminal based applications. And because of that, and because of that, I frequently have my hands on the keyboard. So it's really nice that tiling window managers are very, very keyboard driven. Now this doesn't mean that you can't use your mouse. Depending on which one you're using, some are more keyboard driven than others. So for example, in BSPWM, I can focus on these windows with my mouse, I can resize them with my mouse as well, and I can switch them between their different spots with my mouse as well if I wanted to do that. Typically though, the only mouse actions I do are resizing and also focusing on different windows. I normally don't move my windows around with the mouse, but if I really needed to do so, then that is something I can do. But as I said, because it's keyboard based, the way that I normally move around is by just moving around on my keyboards. So if I hold super and then press H, that'll focus on the window that is to the left of my current window. And I press that again, to the left of that one, if I press K, that'll go up, J will go down, and I can go back to the first window that I was on as well. And we can also switch around where these are located. So if I do shift super H, that'll switch the window I'm currently focused on here with the window to the left of it. Now you can't really tell because they look exactly the same, but let's open up a program here. And then I try that again. As you can see, the program is moving between those two spots. If I do Super Shift K, that'll move it up. Super Shift J, that'll move it down. So this is the way that I normally move around my window manager. And because I'm normally using terminal applications anyway, my hands were already on the keyboard. So it's just a bit quicker than having to move over to the mouse to actually select a different window. Another cool thing about tiling window managers is easily being able to shift around the layout. Now obviously, unlike a floating window manager, you will be constricted to some rules about how the windows can actually be placed, but generally it's not really going to be that big of a deal. So let's say we have this big node off to the left here, and these two small nodes off to the right. But let's say instead we wanted the big nodes to be on the right side and these small nodes to be on the left. Well, on a lot of tiling window managers, there's no reason why you can't just swap those around. Now, depending on which tiling window manager you're using, you might have more or less control over how you can actually move these windows around. For example, in something like i3, what I could do is have this big window take up the top half of the screen, and these two bottom ones take up the bottom half of the screen. But in BSPWM, that's not something I think you can do. There might be a way to do it, but I haven't really found a way to do so. So even though it does seem like you are a bit more limited in how you can lay out the windows, it makes up for that by making it so much easier to actually get that layout set up. So one common thing, especially with the tiling window managers that exist outside of the desktop environments, they typically have a very clean look. So what I mean by this is generally the windows don't even have window decorations. Now, sometimes they will, like in i3, you will get a little bar up the top that says the name of the window, but that's all you get. You don't get things like a minimize button, an expand button, or a close button. And the reason for that is a minimize button doesn't really make much sense on a tiling window manager because unless you have some way to bring it back, then that window is now hidden forever. An expand button doesn't really make much sense either because what should it be expanding to? Should it expand to the entire screen or expand to the space it's currently in? And that's kind of up to how the developers actually write the application. So it's generally gonna be much easier to just hide that button so it doesn't really break anything. And a close button doesn't make sense either because you can just close with a keyboard binding. Now obviously it's gonna be entirely up to you whether this actually looks better, but for me, I honestly think it looks way better not having those window decorations. Now, I do have a little window decoration. It is just the line around the window that I'm currently focused on. So as you can see, if I move my mouse over here, we have a blue bar around this window. If I move my mouse over here, we have a blue bar around this window. The only reason I do that is just so I can easily identify which window I'm currently focused on. If I really wanted to, I could disable this, but I feel like this actually does add a bit of value, whereas having things like an expand button, a minimize button, and a close button really don't do anything useful and just take up space for no reason. 
As you saw earlier, I still do have some access to floating windows, so if I just make this one a floating window, I can still do stuff like move it around perfectly fine, or I can resize it, and that's pretty much all I need from a floating window. Now, it's nice to have floating windows from time to time. For example, my notes over here, I want to have them centered on my screen just so it's easier to read. I obviously could have these off to the side, but then I have to like look off to the side when I'm reading, and then I'm not looking at the webcam, and it's just a little bit annoying to work with like that. So, what I'd rather have is just make it a floating window, stick it in the center, and like just very easily read it. And this is pretty much the only time I actually use a floating window. The only other time that I use it is for windows that just don't behave well within a tiling context, but I'll talk about those a bit more towards the end of the video. Judging by some of the comments that I get, a lot of people seem to really like Tmux, but I don't really have any systems to SSH into, so the only thing that I would care about for it basically is the tiling. And when you have a tiling window manager, the tiling features built into applications just seem kind of pointless. So for example, I have LF here. LF doesn't tile, but if I want it to tile, I can just open two instances of it. And let's say I wanted to do something like, I don't know, go down my bash RC, copy this, and then paste it into some other directory in here. So, I don't know, paste it into my desktop. So I don't actually need LF to support tiling because I have a tiling window manager so I've basically just got the feature built into my system anyway. And when it comes to apps that support tabbing, a tiling window manager plays really really nicely with that because what it basically does is you could sort of treat each of the different windows in here as sort of like mini desktops. So say you had something like, do I have NNN installed on this system? No, I don't. So NNN is a file manager that has tabbing support. So if you had, say, four NNN tabs open here, you could then have four NNN tabs open here as well. And they're sort of treated as like mini desktops. So tabbing features built into applications just play really, really nicely with a tiling window manager because a tabbing program doesn't really care what the rest of the environment looks like. All it cares is it has a window space and it has tabs and it's gonna draw the tabs in that window space. Now obviously a tabbing application also plays nicely with a floating window manager, but on a tiling window manager, as I said earlier, you can actually see all of the windows at once without having to do any extra fiddling around. So it just makes it a little bit easier to access all of your tabs. Now I did mention this earlier, but tiling window managers do have some obvious problems. The main one being with really poorly written applications that don't resize to the space that they've actually been given. So for example, let's just open up Waker. And what you're gonna notice is Waker has a static size. So it looks okay right now, but let's just put another window in this space. And as you can see, it doesn't try to resize or anything. It just accepts the size it's at and then just lets things get cut off. So we open up another window, the same is gonna be true here. So let's just make this one bigger and it doesn't try to resize or anything, it just accepts that it's gonna have stuff cut off. And that's because this application was given a static size and built entirely around that static size and wasn't designed to resize whatsoever. Even if we make this a floating window, the same is gonna be true here. So if I just make this smaller, it's not going to do anything. If I make it bigger, it won't expand out to the size. It was set at this specific size, and that's the only size that it will run at. So let's go into the Explorer. It's a little bit less terrible in the Explorer. This one is a bit bigger, but if we were to, say, make this smaller, the same thing happens here. It just cuts off stuff that isn't being shown on the screen. It doesn't try to resize or anything like that. All it does is just says, okay, well, it's set at this specific size, and that is the only size it will run at. It won't do anything to try to address that. Now, when I do come across applications like this, I typically run them as floating windows because they'll play a little bit nicer with those, but they are still kind of a pain to work with. So, for an application to properly work within a tiling context, all it needs to do is resize to use the space that it's been given. It doesn't have to do anything else besides that, even if the layout completely breaks. As long as it resizes to actually use the space that it's been given, that is all it needs to do. Obviously, you can do stuff to make it work better in a tiling context, but the bare minimum is just resize to your space. And the other sort of applications that don't play nicely in a tiling context are the applications that try to define their own size. Typically, you're gonna run across this with games. So in a game, it's going to wanna run at say, 1920 by 1080, and that is all it will run at, or 1280 by 720. So in those contexts, you have to find ways to work around them. Normally, you can just make a pseudo full screen mode and they'll play nicely like that. But when it comes to a game, I wouldn't expect those to actually resize to their windows. So you kind of have to work with a game to make sure it's gonna play nicely within a tiling context. As I said, you can get it to work, but they can be a bit finicky from time to time. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. Now, obviously you can probably tell that I really like tiling window managers, and I would like to see more desktop environments built with them in mind. So 
not just using a floating window manager. I know that a lot of people who come from Windows, they want to use a floating window manager because it reminds them of what they were doing on Windows, but it's better than what they did on Windows. But I do like to see more tiling features popping up because they do just make it way easier to work with your system. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, P.D. Road, Tony Don Oculari, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gearies in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel, available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute, and remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>